Hello from BI Consulting Services. Today we're going to do a quick video and I hope, I think this, this video will probably be around 10 minutes or less because we're only going to go over two things. The Net Promoter Score calculation inside Power BI and how to use the new key influencer visual that Power BI just recently deployed. So without further ado, we'll just get started. Um, so where's this data coming from? The link right here will take you directly to where this data is coming from. I'm using the San Francisco Airlines Net Promoter Score data for years 2017 and 2018 to derive my Net Promoter Score calculations. Um, in addition to that, some of the data I'm going to talk about really high level around NPS is denoted inside this blog. Pretty helpful if you want to learn more about NPS and weighted NPS, which is going to be the formula that I show you here in just a few moments. Um, but high level, uh, what is Net Promoter Score? It's essentially taking, um, on a scale from 0 to 10, you're going to take the zeros to 6s. Those are going to be your detractors. 7 and 8s are going to be your passives. And 9s and 10s are going to be your promoters. So as a quick example, let's say you had 100 people take a survey. 50 of those were promoters. 10 of those were detractors. And 40 of those were passives. You will simply take the promoters minus the detractors to get your net promoter score. 50 minus 10 equals 40. So 40 would be your NPS. Um, your scale goes from negative 100 all the way up to 100. And so I hope that information makes sense to you. And I hope you're already using something like Net Promoter Score in your organization. If you're not, I highly recommend you research it. It's a really great, great tool to analyze customer sentiment. Um, and it's a really clean way to gauge it as well. Um, so the one thing that I'm going to do here for you, and I get a, you know, a handful of questions around how you calculate NPS if it were weighted. And some of you may say, if you're already doing a Net Promoter Score survey, why in the world would you weight it? Well, let's say you have, in this case, we're using airlines. So let's say you have one airline that generates, you know, a third of the revenue or two thirds of the revenue, as an example. Well, you want to make sure that even if they have a lower response rate, the responses are weighted higher than an airline that doesn't generate as much revenue. Um, that's just one example. Uh, let's say you're in the service industry and maybe one particular state generates more revenue than another state, you want to make sure that that state's weighted higher than some of the other states so that it's very much so proportionate um, with how your customers are engaging with you on a daily basis. So I hope that makes sense. Again, if it doesn't, feel free to take a look at this blog. It's super straightforward and very helpful for anyone who has questions around uh, weighted net promoter score and it gives you some details around what the net promoter score is also. So since I've already went through the net promoter score calculation um, and you already sort of understand that this case it's just a weighted response. So some of these weights, you know, maybe 1.5 for one response, maybe 1.2 for another, maybe 0 0.05 for another, depending on how they're weighting it to make sure it's proportionate with whatever uh, they're analyzing. Maybe it's revenue. Maybe they want their, you know, MP, their responses to be proportionate with revenue across different components, maybe it's airline or whatnot, so they'll do some weights on some responses based on that. Um, and if that's the case, you know, that's where the weights would come in. So that number is always variable, but high level, this is going to be the calculation you would use to get your net promoter score in a weighted fashion. So hopefully if you've been wrestling with your net promoter score and how to get that calculation, this will help. Um, in addition to this, I just want to sort of caveat, there are cases where I have broken up my NPS, um, where you just do the promoter, detractor, and passive calculation separately. Um, I prefer this method where, where possible, where it's just one big calculation as opposed to multiple. The not as blank piece is really just sort of helping us for any of those respondents who didn't answer a question or the question. Um, depending on if you have additional questions, let's say you have subdriver questions, and those are going to be, let's say you ask a question around, you know, how the, the NPS question is, how likely are you to recommend us to friends and family? Then let's say you ask other questions like, how did you consider the value or the price value or the price of, you know, the airline or the tickets that you purchased? How did you consider the price? Was it reasonable, you know, on a scale from zero to 10? How reasonable or how much did you, you know, like the price? And then from there you might say, what about the price didn't you like? Was it, you know, that we charged baggage fees inside that price or, you know, these are just random things, but maybe you ask, you know, a subset of additional questions to get more details around why they gave you a score 
around the price of those tickets the way that they did. And so if you're using this method, all those questions may not be required questions. You want to make sure you do something to um, basically ignore or not do anything with those blank responses. Um, I found that in some cases it was causing an issue, so it's not as blank sort of just fixes that. Now let's talk through the key influencer visual. Um, so high level, if you haven't already went out and looked this visual up, just go to Google and say key influencer visual Power BI and you should be able to see this detail uh, come up. But high level, we're going to take that net promoter score data that we just sort of looked at quickly um, and we're going to sort of analyze it in a different way. Uh, and I think that this key influencer visual for those folks who are already leveraging the net promoter score data will be extremely helpful. So in this example, I'm taking the category, which again is going to be those promoters, detractors, and passives. And we're going to use it for the explained by. In this example, we're going to use airline, but consider this to be anything. It could be a particular city or state. It could be a destination because I'm looking at airline data, but it could be really a, a, a wide array of things that it relates to. But in this example, we're going to just use airline. So quickly, what we're going to do here is you're going to be able to see and quickly identify you know, what the influences, what influences basically this category to be a detractor. And in this example, um, when the airline is Qantas, and I hope I got that right, the likelihood of the category being detractor increases by 2.86% or 2.86 times. So high level, this is extremely helpful. So you know that in theory, um, you are more likely to be a detractor if you are riding with the Qantas airline. Um, and same here, and this is sort of showing you the, the difference, but you can see that 2.28. So you can see that this airline is Air France, and you are this times 2.28 times more likely to be a detractor when riding, you know, when, when riding with this airline or flying with this airline, excuse me. And so this is pretty important information. So you can take this to the operations teams and in conjunction with your airline specific data, maybe there's key components that are really frustrating the customers. You can analyze your net promoter score data in totality and sort of determine what is causing these customers to be so highly likely to be a detractor if they're flying with this particular airline. And in addition to that, you can then compare that information to those folks who are likely to be promoters. Um, so the first one that you can see here, if the airline is Hawaiian, it is 1.37 times more likely to be a promoter. And then so forth and so on with this data. So I think this is pretty um, you know, helpful information. Now, let's just say you are, you know, I always go to sort of like this YMCA example, but there's a number of examples but let's say you're a YMCA association that manages 10 different branch locations. You can quickly identify, you know, which particular branch folks are most happy when they go to versus those who are not happy or in the detractor bucket if they go to a different one. And then sort of determine what those things our customers are saying um, that denote why they're unhappy with their experience at that particular branch location. Um, this in conjunction with what I call open-ended questions where you ask them to provide more details and they type out, you know, some pretty, sometimes pretty robust information. It could be prices are too high or the bathrooms are already, are always dirty or the airline, you know, the seats are always dirty or there's just not enough room or the fact that you charge me luggage fees is an issue. Um, if you use those open-ended components, which are not in this data set here, it does help you derive some additional insights. Um, so again, I think this visual is one you could definitely incorporate into any of your net promoter score calculations. Power BI Desktop is a free tool, so if you're not using it and you want to go ahead and start using it for your net promoter score survey data as an example, uh, feel free to go out to Power BI and download it. I will go back to my welcome page. If you go out to my website directly, you will be able to download Power BI, um, I think in the more about Power BI section. Um, there is a subset of information that will take you directly to where you can download Microsoft Power BI. If you have any questions or you want additional details on net promoter score or the key influencer chart, 
feel free to drop a line in the comment section. Thanks.